A very good morning, everybody. If I could ask you all to sit down, we're just about to move into the final session. Um, we've all been looking forward to this Congress for so long. Um, I'm actually quite sad that we'll all be saying goodbye very soon. But before we do, we have got a fantastic session and two wonderful keynote speakers to bring together some of the themes of the Congress. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Mary Paul Kearney. She's the Assistant Director General of Health Systems and Innovation at the World Health Organization. And she's uh, come here especially today to talk to us. So I'd like to welcome her to the stage. Sir Michael, dear Joe, patient advocates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First, I would like to congratulate the International Alliance of Patients Organization, IAPO, for organizing this event, which brings you all here to discuss patients' role in achieving universal health coverage. Since 2005, when WHO member states made commitments to work towards universal health coverage, UHC has been placed at the forefront of WHO agenda. It is a mechanism to improve health for all. The Director General herself regards UHC as, and I quote, the single most powerful concept that public health has to offer. It is inclusive. It unifies services and delivers them in a comprehensive and integrated way based on primary health care. The goal of UHC, indeed, is to ensure that all people have access to the health services they need without suffering from hardship when paying for those services. The move towards UHC encompasses three underpinning objectives. First, it is about ensuring equity in access to services. Second, it is about ensuring the quality of services. And third, it is about avoiding financial risk when using the services. Good health financing systems are essential to ensure access. Indeed, finances determine the availability of the services. WHO has developed an action plan to support member states in developing good health financing strategies. The report entitled Health System Financing, the Path to Universal Health Coverage, maps out what country can do to reform their health financing system in order to move towards UHC. Patient can and need to be uh, at the heart of these reforms. I must say that since this uh, report was published, it was a, a, a World Health Report, we have received re uh, requests from more than 80 uh, WHO member states for assistance to review and to change the way they finance uh, health uh, in, in their countries. Better access to healthcare also requires strong, efficient, well-run health delivery systems equipped with skilled and competent health workers. WHO supports countries on numerous initiatives to scale up health professional education, which will both increase the number of skilled health workers and improve the quality of the services. We also work with partners to improve recension of workers in remote and rural places so that people have access to the services they need. Patient-provider partnerships are key to these endeavors. As we speak, we are developing a new WHO strategy on people-centered and integrated health services. This strategy emphasizes that UHC is not just about financing. It is also about high-quality services for people. Health services not only need to be accessible, they need to be safe, of high quality and most of all be responsive to the needs and the choices of people who use them. Ladies and gentlemen, UHC 
is the goal that countries are moving towards too. It is a journey that needs all partners to be on board, patients, providers, policy makers, and civil society. Patients and health as consumers are key stakeholders and partners on this journey. It is the experience and feedback from people that have determined whether or not and how we truly achieved UHC. Patients' feedback about the care they receive is helpful for quality improvement. Patients' participation in research not only contributes to service improvement and organizational design, but also to the building of evidence for policy. Patients and consumers are great advocates who can help champion the implementation and initiatives on UHC. In the same way as the Patient for Patient Safety Network helps advocate for patient safety initiatives with great results, consumers and patient organizations can help advocate for the implementation of initiatives on UHC. They can do this by collaborating with healthcare providers or policymakers to support the implementation of strategies or initiatives. WHO works actively with patient networks, consumers, groups, NGOs, and WHO collaborative centers. Engaging patients through organizations which provide support to these patients is both sustainable and practical. This is how we engage with patients in Canada, Ireland, and Malaysia. There is no ample evidence that, first, the benefit of engaging patients and families can be seen in many levels. Involving them in direct care is a way to achieve patient-centered care. Second, many countries have patients as members of hospital boards. Involving them in organizational designs or governance helps improve health systems that deliver people-centered health services. Third, many of patient for patient safety advocates contribute to health policy development or implementation through membership of patient safety councils, clinical governance of national health commissions. Fourth, evidence from countries like Australia, USA or Canada, and recently from Ireland and Malaysia, shows that engaging patients and family not only improves quality and responsiveness, but also lowers the cost of healthcare, especially in the management of patients with chronic conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, patients and families have been our key stakeholders and partners. WHO led the way in empowering and engaging patients and their family in efforts to improve patient safety when it launched the World Allowance for Patient Safety a decade ago. One of the World Alliance for Patient Safety core pillars was a program entitled Patient for Patient Safety. The Patient for Patient Safety Network is stronger as it ever was. We have now over 300 patient champions in 53 countries around the world. Many are here in the audience today. Patient for Patient Safety remains a core program at WHO, providing leadership for global efforts in empowering and engaging patients. Indeed, it is through the Patient for Patient Safety program that IAPO has partnered with WHO on different initiatives, including the people-centered and integrated health services uh, strategy uh, uh, articulation. Many of you have already contributed to this, uh, the development of this strategy by participating in the patient testimonial survey and focus group discussion we were jointly organized by WHO and IAPO. Patients and their families are valued partners in the journey towards UHC. I encourage you to talk to the patients for patient safety team for further details on working and collaborating with WHO. Finally, 
I would like to congratulate you for your enthusiasm in joining these global efforts to achieve UHC. Only with inputs and participation from health consumers, patients and their family, and with CSOs, civil society is very important for that, will the world achieve people-centered universal health coverage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.